we. We have a warning in the psalm. And when we read the psalm, we discover how spiritual decline or a turning away from God takes place ever so gradually and subtly. Step by step, individuals can move away from God, can turn away from God, can turn against God. So, as our psalm indicates, it begins when individuals follow the advice or walk in the counsel of the wicked or the ungodly. And friends, if you didn't know this before, it is a fact that there are wicked and ungodly people in our world. I was reading recently, and there is actually a group, a movement, whose mission, whose goal is to make this nation ungodly. This is true. Whose mission is to make this nation ungodly. My friends, there is a way to live that is opposed to God's way. And there are those who will try to advise us and our children to take that way, to follow in that path. So today I say to you who are present and to you who are viewing, beware of following their advice or their counsel. So that is how it begins, by listening to and following the advice and the counsel of the wicked or the lost or the ungodly. And then, soon, those who do so come to the point where they are no longer just receiving the counsel or the advice of the wicked or the ungodly, but they become supporters of that which is ungodly until eventually they find themselves sitting in the place, abiding in the dwelling of those who do not believe in God and God's word. They become scoffers. That's what the psalmist calls them. Regarding belief in God as something silly or stupid. Read the psalm for yourself. And you will see this gradual, subtle, step-by-step -step movement away from God. This spiral, this downward spiral where persons turn against God. Literally, the psalmist is saying, and I quote here, happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the lost. And in the path of the guilty, he does not stand. And in the dwelling belonging to imitators, he does not sit. End of quote. Then, as we continue to read the first psalm in the Bible, we find the psalmist going on to indicate that there is a blessing or there is happiness for those who delight in the law of the Lord. In other words, those who take pleasure and find joy in God's law and teaching and, and whose lives are guided and directed by it. There is happiness for those who do so. They are blessed. Their delight is reflected in their constant meditation on God's law. 
On that law, they meditate day and night. To meditate on the law of God means to study it, first of all, to know it, and to bring it to mind, to think about it, to remember it, and be guided accordingly. That is what it means to meditate on the law of God, on the word or the teaching of God contained in Scripture. We must study it. We must bring it to mind. Think about it day and night and be guided accordingly. Blessed or happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or the ungodly or the lost, who do not stand in the way of sinners and who do not sit in the seat of the scornful. You see, he uses those negative terms first. He describes the blessing in negative ways, and then he turns to a positive way of describing the blessing. But their delight, they take pleasure in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. The psalmist goes on, to use the lovely metaphor that is the theme for our reflection today. The metaphor of a tree planted by streams of water to describe those who delight in the law of the Lord. And I am sure as you think about that, if you just imagine it for a moment, that there are so many thoughts, so many ideas that come to mind as we think of this lovely metaphor. Those who are like trees planted by streams of water have the following characteristics. They have stability. They are planted by streams of water planted, they have stability. In fact, my friends, the word that is used here has the sense of being transplanted, of being removed from the unsuitable to a more suitable location. I'm sure You've all transplanted plants before. You've, you know what it is to move a plant from one area to another because you think it might thrive, it might do better in another area. So the Hebrew word that is used here for planted has that sense of one who has been moved from one area and placed in a, a more suitable location. So we also have here, my friends, the picture of stability, suitability, and strength. They are rooted, and though assailed and buffeted by the winds of adversity, they remain firm and fixed in God, the ground and the foundation of their faith. The wicked or the ungodly are not so, the psalmist says, but they are like chaff, dry, scaly stuff that the wind drives away. They cannot stand in the day of the judgment, says the psalmist. Then, as we think about it further, and what the psalmist says, another characteristic of those planted by streams of water is their productivity. The psalmist says, which yield their fruit in its season. They are fruitful. Trees have many benefits, you know. 
They do much for the environment. They help to support life. And so, my friends, those who are described as trees planted by the streams of water are so productive because they are rooted and fixed in God. And then there's a sense of that they have a vitality which nothing can take away from them. Their leaves do not wither, the psalmist says. They remain spiritually vital. You know, there's a sense in which, friends, we can dry up spiritually. You can go through periods of spiritual drought. It is possible that an individual can lose his or her spiritual vitality. So if we do not constantly draw from the source, from the word of God, from the law of God, we can become spiritually impoverished, spiritually dry. We can lose our spiritual vitality. But the psalmist is saying that those who are like trees planted by the streams will maintain that vitality as they constantly draw from the refreshing streams which God supplies. And finally, prosperity. They prosper in all that they do. You know, sometimes we have this mistaken notion that we can't prosper when we depend on God. That somehow to prosper means to turn away from God. And yes, one of the psalmists exclaims, why do the wicked prosper? And sometimes it appears as though wicked people are prospering more than righteous people. But the psalmist makes the point that it's only for time. That real prosperity, my friends, has something to do with God. I I can't help, you know, as I reflect on these things, I can't help thinking that whoever had anything to do with putting those words in God we trust on the United States dollar must have known that it is when we put our trust and our confidence in God that we truly prosper. Not in the almighty dollar as we say, but in the almighty one who created all things. And so the psalmist today, Psalm 1 in the Bible, that psalm that sets the tone for all the psalms to follow, that can set the tone for our lives, pronounces that blessing, that happiness on those who are planted and those who delight in the law of the Lord. Because when we do so, we prosper, we do well. We can be successful advancing in position and possessions. The path of the wicked or the lost ones leads to abandonment, according to the psalmist. So let us follow the path God has laid out for us, as this will lead to a full and happy life. I commend that psalm to you today, my friends. Look at it when you get home. Read it again. And remember, as you go through life, to delight in the law of the Lord. For those who do so will be like trees planted by streams of water that bring forth their fruit, that remain vital, and that prosper in all that they do. For this is the will of God concerning us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us spend a few moments in silent meditation.
as we continue to reflect on the word that was proclaimed today. Um, our technicians are informing us that we had some issues with Facebook today. So we began our live stream a little late. Thanks to Andrew for getting us live. And so we continue to offer prayers for our first responders, our farmers, truck drivers, and other elected officials. So we want to apologize to our online viewers for the technical problems we experienced today. We have 12 online viewers according to the report of our technicians. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let us pray for our web sponsors, Joyce Heiliger, the Vosbury family, Sharon Geyer, and Chelsea Wise, sponsoring our web ministry today. We give thanks, O oh gracious God, for their generosity and thoughtfulness. And we thank you for the skill and wisdom of our technicians. And pray, Lord, your continued blessings on this ministry. Pray that you will continue to bless and prosper those who are sponsoring our web ministry today. We pray for all those they honor and recognize, remembering our birthday celebrants. We, as, an, as a family, give thanks, O oh God, for Sister Heiliger, who has, been, who has sponsored the ministry today in our honor. Thank you, Lord, for Lorna, for Annie, my wife, for Japheth, our son. And I give thanks that I was able to celebrate, we were able to celebrate another anniversary of our birth. Thank you for all your blessings upon us, O oh, gracious God. We pray for Crystal Trowbridge and Brian Geyer. Thank you for blessing them and honoring them with life and health and strength. And we pray, Lord, that all who celebrate will delight in your law and will prosper. Thank you for our upcoming celebrants. We remember them today. Uh, we pray in a very special way for our dear sister Cheryl Crast, our office administrator, that you will strengthen her and continue to equip her for the work that she does in the office. For Hunter Nerber, for Kim Anderson, Paul Mandat, Heather Smith, and Jordan Stone, we pray today. Oh, gracious God, we pray in appreciation for Tony and Maddox Wise for what they do for their family. Bless the Wise family, God, oh, gracious God. Strengthen them and build them up in love and faithfulness for each other. We remember the sick ones today, those recuperating, those who have been infected with COVID, those suffering with seizures and other debilitating conditions, those battling cancer, diseases of organs, those with fractures and broken limbs, those with mental, emotional, and spiritual concerns, those families that are struggling with various issues, Lord, we thank you for your hand of mercy and healing on our brother Chuck. We pray for Adam and Lucas, Al and Carolyn, Karen, 
and others that we bring to mind at this time. We pray that the weary will find strength and the weak will increase in power. We pray for those who mourn that they will not be disheartened, but will trust in you, O oh God, the strength of their heart and their portion forever. We pray for, the, for our nation and all nations of the world. We remember in a particular way the situation um, of the tension between Russia and Ukraine. Praying, Lord, that those who work for peace will be strengthened and remain committed to diplomacy and efforts that bring peace and positive change. We pray for the love that is patient and kind, that does not envy or boast, that is not proud, does not dishonor others, and is not self-seeking, not easily angered, and which keeps no record of wrongs. And we pray, Lord, that we will be those who delight in your law and grow in righteousness. As we prepare to depart this place today, we thank you for all those who have prepared refreshments for our nourishment. Bless what has been prepared. Bless those who will serve us. And bless our fellowship and our time together. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We close with the hymn, I'm Gonna Live So God Can Use Me. 2153, From the Faith We Sing. Months, so we are trying to sing some of those African-American um, songs or Negro spirituals. And on the last Sunday of the month, we're going to have a focus on, on that music uh, with commentary. So we welcome you and others to join us for that special service to conclude the month. Please receive the benediction at this time. In your name, Lord God, we go forth in your strength to be strong, in your wisdom to be wise, in your grace to find our sufficiency, in your Holy Spirit to abide in love, joy, and peace. Thine is the kingdom, O God, the power and the glory forever and ever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon us this day and throughout this week and always. Amen. Amen. Happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. Happy Valentine's Day.
and everyone is invited to the fellowship hall for our time of fellowship. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day.